Thank you. So, um, I don't know whether to explore the similarities or the differences between what I've got here and the, the mammoth beat organ. We share lots of similar interests in terms of instrument building. Um, I'm actually working with amplification. So I build these instruments and they're all amplified. And I, th I think about amplification as a very simple form of sound manipulation, electronic sound manipulation. And then I don't really like to mess around with the sound any more than just amplifying things. Um, I have to say that when I started making instruments, making music, and it's still the case now, I had no money. So I had to find ways of doing things very simply and with junk I could find, stuff I could collect off the street, stuff I could find in charity shops, stuff I could buy in supermarkets, whatever, um, and model shops and places like that. Um, so that has had, uh, alongside a few other things, it's had a big influence on, on what I'm able to do and what I do, and that in turn has given me a direction and a path to follow. So I, like, as I said, I work with amplification, and that in part is also due to the fact that in my work, my music making, I have a kind of dualistic practice. So I work a lot with making field recordings or location recordings, some of which I might play you. Um, oh, hang on. I'm going to set the timer so that I don't overrun. Um, so I work a lot with field recording, and then that informs the instruments on the tabletop here. So some of these things have, have arisen because I heard something, a sounding phenomena, a vibration happening somewhere else or within other materials. So I use field recording. I have a little record, digital recording device with various different types of microphones. So I use field recording to explore the potential of materials and places. So I will, maybe I'll find a, a piece of rock or a bit of wood or a plant and wonder how does this sound? What is the condition of this thing? How does it sound? What's happening there? What phenomenon ha what phenomena is happening there? What energy is, is there? How does it sound? Is it interesting? Can I work with it? Can I record it for both well, my own pleasure and also for later use? I should add that I think of all musical instruments as being transducers. All sound is the product of energy being transformed from one form into another. So for instance, if you pluck a guitar string, you know, it's the, the energy from your muscles, the, let's say the biochemical energy in your arm, transferred to the, to the string which vibrates, which is then transferred into acoustic pressure waves, acoustic energy via the body of the guitar. Likewise, the sound of the wind, we talk about the sound of the wind, the wind is silent, doesn't make any sound until it comes into contact with something else, let's say a wire or a tree, and then the energy that is within that moving air, within the wind, is then transformed again into acoustic pressure waves, vibrations in the air. And then the tree is kind of an instrument played by the wind. Um, similarly, I like to think about, this reverts back to my field recording, I like to think about bridges, road bridges, um, as being transducers for energy. So I, I wrote something recently where I said, um, um, a passing car is to a bridge as the bow is to a violin. And I'll just, that segues nicely for me. I'll just play this little recording that I made a few years ago of, um, a bridge on the B229 in Ashford in Kent. And what I'm trying to do here is actually illustrate how thinking about making recordings and thinking about that can lead into this stuff here, lead to me building this stuff. Um. Oh. loud. And I forgot to say something really important. 
forgive me. I, when, when I make field recordings, I often use contact microphones. Um, do you, some of you familiar with contact microphones? Basically what these do, you can put them on something and they take the, the energy inside things and you can listen into that. You can eavesdrop on a table or on a, on a bridge. It creates a voltage that, you, that then is, is recorded on your device's sound. Do you want to have a look at that? Just in case you're not familiar with it, you want to have a look at that and pass it along. It's a very simple device, but you can do lots of things with them. So most of the instruments I have here actually have the, their main pickup principle, contact microphones. So, I've suddenly gotten lost. I've got so much to say and I've forgotten what I want to say next. So, yeah, contact microphones pick up the vibration inside things. Energy, all instruments transform energy from one form into another. And the world, as we may or may not know, is full of energy being transformed all the time. It's in constant flux. So, the world itself is constantly sounding in many respects. So, Actually focusing in on that and choosing something that you can use as a principle to build an instrument round is, can be quite challenging and tricky because there's so many other things to plow through and to think about and then to decide upon. Um, I will demonstrate this, this idea of putting energy into something um, and that playing itself out. So here, I'm a big fan of springs. Springs are, are really amazing bits of technology. Oh, there you go, hang on. Because you can put energy into them and they release that energy slowly over a period of time. Um, and here I've got a, a metal plate with a pair of contact mics underneath, permanently attached, can you see? And then this metal plate is in turn suspended by small springs within a wooden frame, which makes it much more effective as an instrument. Now then, just give that a settle to settle um, a moment to settle down. Yeah, the weight. And these springs are all attached, just clipped on. So I, afterwards, I'll pull all that apart, take the springs off, and pack it all away. So I can play this in a number of ways. I'll show you. But first, I'll. I'll to show you how putting energy in there can make it can make it to sound. And I developed a few different ways of playing it, putting sound into it, putting energy into it, sorry. So I can blow across it with, this is very quiet, this bit. And one of the good things about being an ex-smoker is I can breathe and blow again. I'll show you this.
I won't do too much on that. I'll save the best stuff for tonight, I hope. Um, so it's a slightly, I'm working on a slightly different principle. I have something here that I built at the start of the lockdown. Um, inside here, so let's move on, a pair of solar cells. So this works on very different principles to the contact mic stuff. Um, and this is in a ro ro rotatable thing, so that if I want to pick up, say, the sound of the house lights, which can't do until I've plugged it in, So you can hear that already, actually. So these LED house lights are really quite... Oh. Oh. Less strong comes over there. And there, it's really quite intense. Oh. So I've built this on a little pivot, which is also where I plug it in so that I can be a bit more focused. That's a little battery operated fan with little LEDs on and a little pulse width modulation circuit so I can change the speed and mess around with it, so. I've been buying some bicycle lights, which work quite nicely. get the idea. That's kind of quite fun and it sounds quite different to everything else I have. It's more electronic. Um, well, both Sam and Graham said before about musical influences and I think we probably share similar influences in industrial music and noise music and various bits of electronic music and dance music and you can kind of tell you can hear that in there. Um, now, yeah? Yeah. I don't know the exact principle, but there's just a pair of cheap solar cells from, you know, you get these really awful, cheap, tacky garden on which are solar cells in you buy in thrift shops and cheap shops. So it's just a pair of solar cells from, from some, again, being, stuff being cheaply available is really helpful. So, no, 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 no that, that just goes straight into, it's a stereo output straight to a pair of jacks, which are then amplified. I should say, I'm using quite a bit of amplification for a lot of this stuff. So there's, inside this box here, there are 12 stereo preamps that have given me 40 decibels of gain on each thing, and then I control it separately from the mixer. So that's really, I mean, it's, it potentially, it could actually blow equipment up, but it doesn't. I guess if there's a burst of light that's really strong, it might produce a voltage that could damage something, but. 
That's what I thought at first. Um, I'm not sure now. I think it's to do with the flicker, the rate. So it must be the, more the, the, the wavelength of the, 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 the flicker from the LEDs, I think. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's quite, quite common, isn't it, with, um, quite common with electronics of various kinds that you, you surprisingly, you can wire it just to an audio output, amplify that, and get a signal out of it. I, I know like, mm -hmm. people who've done it with those little flickery candles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's flickering at a rate that's within audible range. Um, and it's just they're, they're kind of hidden away until you poke around and amplify it, and away you go. And then all of a sudden you realise, well, actually, thank you. That leads me on to something that I wanted to talk about that's isn't necessarily represented by anything on the table, but similar sounding principles. So as Sam just said, things being hidden away until you start messing around and discover stuff is, I mean, again, that lies behind a lot of this stuff here. But in, back in April, I started a project at a brownfield site in Krakow in Poland, and uh, was miking up various things on this site. So this to try and garner and scrounge as much sound as I could. And from this site, so it was a brownfield site that's had several years to recover. So it was like the scrub, scrub woodland and, and meadow and grassland and other bits and pieces there. And I was miking up some. Actually, I was miking up a wire chain link fence at first, and I heard something very interesting. Then I miked up a, a bit of old, a bit of old plant herb from the previous year, and heard an insect calling in there. And I knew it was an insect by the nature of the sounds. Insects, most insects, make sound through stridulation which the term stridulation is related to stride. So they make the sound with that, usually with their legs, sometimes wing cases. But um, let's find that. Over the course of this summer, I've done a few different projects where I've remembered that I heard this stuff in this place in Krakow in Poland and started miking up grasses and old plants and started to hear some really fascinating stuff that I did not expect to hear at all. And I'll find it's a really rough quality recording, but something that I'm really excited about. Um, this is a recording I made in Poland, out in the countryside, south of Krakow. Um, I'd mic'd up, I'd put some contact microphones on an old plant, I don't know, there's like a, a golden rod or something like that from the previous year. Did it at around about dusk, no sound at all. So I went back the following morning in sunny weather, a slight breeze, and it was very, very different. Oh, hang on. Is that plugged in? Yeah. There we go. Can you hear that? That isn't my gut. Promise me, I So I'm not entirely certain what's making the sound. I'm guessing it's some kind of beetle larvae that's living inside the plant. And there's, there are two individuals calling backwards and forwards to each other. But nearly all insects, as far as I know, they, they listen through their feet, through their legs. They feel, pick up the vibration in the same way that the contact microphones do. They pick up vibration in a substrate, in the veg, either in the ground or in the, the plant matter that they're living inside and on. So these two critters, are, I guess, are calling to each other through the, the, the dried vegetal material of the stalk that they're inside. I got very excited. It's, it's really not, it's, considering how the recording is made, it's a really nice recording, and considering what it is, or what it, I think it is. Oh. And I had no idea I was going to encounter something like that. Um, now, let's, let's see. So all these recordings are pretty rough and unprocessed because these were only made back at the start of August. So um, 
This one, let's see what, what's happening here. That's an ant. I saw it, so I know that's an ant. Let's try this one. Not so, not so clear. Okay, ants are, these ants are very fast moving and stridulating quite a bit, so. You, well, stridulating every now and then, they call and then they move on fairly quickly. But you hear that? I was really, I've never heard that before, so I was really surprised. And I saw the ants, so I figured, and I also heard the ants, the same species, making the same call in two different locations, about 50, 60 kilometres apart. So I'm pretty certain that that's what's going on there, if it matters. Um, I've, obviously, when you encounter something like that that you, you don't expect to encounter, it can. For me, it's shifted the way I think about the world and the way I, I view going out for a walk in the fields. I don't want to go tramping over grass because I know that potentially I'm destroying the habitat and homes of, of creatures that are living inside and calling. Um, now, I'll play you... There's another one that I'm really... In, that I'm, is really fascinating to me that I made in Barrow in Furness up in Cumbria back in July. And what I did here, after encountering some of these sounds in, in this site in Poland, I put the, some contact microphones on last year's meadow sweet. You know, meadow sweet is a, is a, is a plant, it's kind of, can grow up to about a metre tall, a metre and a half tall, that people used to use during the Middle Ages to flavour mead, hence the name mead sweet or meadow sweet. And it was just in flower, but there were some others that were from the previous year that were on a small site in the middle of a muni municipal park that's been rewilded. So it's only maybe had two seasons, two summers, sorry, two years in which to revert back to some kind of semi-natural state. But already in that time, the plants are grown and insects have found homes within some of the plants. I'm going to fast forward this a bit because it's a long recording. Um, and again, it's quite rough, but quite excited by it. That's the sound of the wind blowing on the plant. So it's really hard to make these recordings when there's wind blowing because the sounds will just pick up the energy from the wind, as I was talking before about energy being transduced by things. You hear those ticking sounds? The wind came and blew it all down. But that's, um, thank you for indulging me with that. That's something that I'm really excited about. Um, so why did I play those? Um, I guess to show you that if you listen into things and scrape the surface of things that you think you know and really familiar with, it's actually something completely alien and different. Um, and you can have a, a, by listening in and recording things, it's a bit of a tired cliche, but by listening, listening into things, your view of the world, by just scraping the surface of something, 
your view of the world can change. And it's almost, for me, it's almost like an alchemical practice, listening in and then building these things and transforming mundane materials into something else. Right, I guess I, should, I haven't really told him much about, some, or demonstrated much, some of these things. But related to that, I could actually go on and talk about hydrophone recordings and underwater plants making sounds, underwater insects making sounds, but maybe we'll save that for another time. But I need a volunteer from the audience who's willing to come and... Please, come up. Right, I want two volunteers. I want two volunteers. So you, you come, please. Right, this is... I'll explain a little bit, but not too much. So I was, I was doing a, a residency down in, in Kent, just on the North Downs, which is Chalkland Hills. Um, and I'd seen lots of piles of chalk at the surface. And I, I got, for the whole two years I was doing the residency, I was thinking, I should do some experiments with this stuff and see what it does. And of course I didn't. I was too busy trying to record bloody owls and other things and trying to do other stuff. And then I think just in the final week, someone else who was also doing a residency in this art centre said, oh, who'd been crushing up chalk to make a kind of crude plaster, said, oh, when I put it in water, it, it, sounds, does some, it sounds really amazing. You should try it. So I thought, oh, bloody hell yeah, I should try it. Anyhow, do you want to select a piece of, do you want to select a piece of the chalk and just place it in there? Thank you. And now I'm going to turn it up. And just to prove that that's not a recording, here, I'll tap that. If you want to come up and have a look, feel free because you'll see. There is actually some visual action happening there as well, ever so slightly. Is that water? That's water, yeah. Yep, yeah, definitely water. Does it make a difference to how large the piece is? Or just... There's lots of, vari lots of variables where it's from, the density of the, of the, 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 the chalk. So most of this is from either Kent or maybe the Marlborough Downs or from the beach at Margate. Um, so that's, again, that's the North Downs. I have some from the site of Krakow that's very different. I have some from the north of France that's different. So there's, there are variables. <laughs> that's, that's for later. <laughs> this, is a, this is a good selection. These are really nice pieces. <laughs> And if you look in there, if you want to, maybe if you want to file past, you'll notice there's actually lots of bubbles coming out of that chalk, mm -hmm. and that's what's making the sound. Mm -hmm. So the it's the air being forced out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the bubbles are either clicking and oscillating. So there's kind of it's it really oh nice. It's kind of a synthesizer. But I wonder if you that noise. No, no, exactly. This? Maybe yeah, or a crack, dry crackling kind of sound or. Exactly, and different sides of pores do different things. Yeah. This is true, I and mean, I have so that I think that's from near Verdun in the east of France. They can see visually they look different, yeah. but also I've reused lots of these. I'm from there's no talk anyway near Manchester, so when I have it, I have to keep it and reuse it, so it's a bit worn down. But, but. Nice, yeah, yes. Well, I have some, I do have some from. Well, from, um, from the Marlborough Downs. It's not quite well, so but it's not far from, yeah. That's really nice, actually. Yeah. So this, this thing has eight contact microphones in there. Well, there's this stereo, this is paired left and right. So it's very simple. Well, I mean, this is doing stuff I haven't heard before. Generally, I'm, I'm assuming because of the same pieces that I've used many, many times, do similar stuff. But a very small amount of the chalk is dissolved in the water each time, so it will affect. It might affect. 
Oh, I dried them out. Yeah, yeah. I take them all, put them on the radiator. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Rather. Yeah. Well, the, these are my instruments. <laughs> I've never. Actually, I, was gonna, I say I've never tried it. With the stuff I was, with some experiments I was doing in, in Krakow, I was, I thought it would be nice to heat it up maybe with a candle and listen. It's actually very, very quiet and a very, very textural, very quiet and a crackling sound. It doesn't do anything like this, unfortunately. It, it, well, they, can, they, they come through, they come through to the inside on the back part of the contact light. But it's sealed with glue, so it's kind of an inverted kind of hydrophobic. Yeah, and put it yeah. The so the, the the water is directly touching the back of the contact mic, so I'm not losing any of that vibration. Yeah, no, it's not on the outside of the plastic. It's actually set in and through the whole touch. Yeah. So if I you know, I see it's quite loud, quite sensitive. But, um, but that's related. I, I'm talking with the bubbles there. Um, let's see if I can find. Oh, <laughs> see that. That's actually. <laughs> um. So this sound I'm bringing in now. I'll fade it out. This is actually an aquatic plant called Homo that's making sound in a similar way. This was a blazing hot September day back in 2005. I recorded this not far from where I live. Um, oh, there's a, there's a story to this. Oh. So I was recording that and I recorded that for about 20 minutes. And then I got bored and decided to move my underwater microphones to the hydrophones, which I actually have here. I've since decommissioned them, but these are the basic hydrophones I recorded that sound with. So I moved <coughs> them, I dragged them towards it. They're in amongst all this <coughs> aquatic plant. So I moved them and I, what I should have done is take them out carefully, but I was lazy. So I dragged them towards me. And what they did was drag the whole complex mass of this plant towards me. And then it moved back into its original position. And at that point, that sound changed to this. It's kind of crazy. Um, I think I upset it. Exactly. Well, what I actually thought at the time, at the time I didn't know that the, the plants, the pond weed was making a sound, so I thought it was, these were insects. I thought this was a beetle, and I thought, oh, I've really upset I'm going to swear, I was really pissed off the beetle. And, uh, but then someone suggested, no, you think that could be the plant? Said, Surely not. But then when I got down on my hands and knees and looked into the water, I could see the bubbles coming out, like you see in the jaw. And I made that connection. And I thought, okay, wow, right. So I'd spent the whole summer making recordings of this kind of stuff in local ponds, um, without even in entertaining the idea that this, these sounds weren't made by plants. Not only that, Okay, these plants are making these kind of weird sounds, but then when you disturb them, they do stuff like this. And I'm vegetarian, I don't want to cause harm to living, to, to sensitive creatures, but the plants themselves maybe are aware and sensitive to being disturbed and being picked. So, so I stopped, that's when I stopped doing this, because I had to take a step back and think, it changed my worldview. But, right. I'll do one very quick thing, maybe, and then because I'm realising I'm running out of time and it's Sarah's turn next. Does anyone have a nut allergy? That they know of. <laughs> How about a seed allergy? <laughs> right. Has anyone got a nut allergy? Great, let's, let's, let's break out the peanuts. Um, so, and this is kind of related to some of the themes I've touched upon in terms of energy transformation. And also, someone talked about how many calories, you mentioned about calories being burned. Now, when I, w I should have set this up earlier, bear with me. Here's one I haven't prepared earlier. Um, oh, Graham, can you pass me my coat, please? Thanks. Um, a school friend of mine 
we, uh, it was a year or two younger than me, but we both had the same, thank you, science teacher, mentioned to me a few years ago um, about how you calculate calorific value. Oh, really? So you know, okay, well, you, you, to, because I, yeah, you might need to correct me. So it's, it's the amount of energy needed to, how, well, is it the amount of energy necessary to raise the temperature of a litre of water by one degree? Uh, something like that. Thank you. Right, right. <laughs> thank you. So you mentioned this to me, and, and I've been doing some experiments with, um, well, burning matches, putting them on contact microphones and listening to the sound of burning wood. So listening to things that you'd never be able to hear with the naked ear. So a bit like this kind of stuff. Um, and, and so I thought, well, if there's that much energy in a book, because he, he showed the experiment with it, the teacher did the experiment with a peanut underneath um, you know, a litre of water. But well, if there's that much energy there, surely maybe some of that is given off as sound, or some, is as kinetic energy that can be listened to. So I started to do some experiments, and so I have some really cheap, nasty peanuts, and I also do stuff with, with pumpkin seeds sometimes, and almonds, and because you know, they're, they're an amazing store of energy. There's enough energy there to get a, a tree growing. You know. Right, I need a lighter, which I nearly forgot. It's been two years since I quit smoking, so I, I often you think, yeah. Know. I know, exactly. <laughs> and how, I might not have the lighter on me anymore. Oh, hell, this is going to be a bit of a disaster. Well, there it is. Last time I flew. Okay, right. I just need to make sure I've got the, the right thing plugged in because I haven't got the right thing plugged in. Because I've. Because this thing is new, and I don't always do, do the burning nuts anymore, I've run out of inputs on my mixer to plug things into. So, where did... I'm really organised. Now, where did I put those plugs there? Do you, by any chance, you, how you, do you have an analogy to nuts of any kind? Perfect, we can go ahead. <laughs> I'm older than I'm older than I look, you know. <laughs> okay, it's good. should work. Checking for smoke detectors.
and they will carry on crackling like that for quite a while while the carbon that's left behind cools down and contracts and But I quite like, I mean, I quite like there's a, you wouldn't expect there to be a certain amount of playability in the sound of a burning nut, but you can play it a little bit. And I like the, kind of the envelope of the sound, kind of noisy and quite tamely rich, and then this very subtle cooling down afterwards. Okay, I should stop there now and allow Sarah to take Great. over. I haven't even, if you want to hear that, I've got some lovely droning things here. If you want to hear those, you have to come back later on. Thank you very okay. much, Lee. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank mm-hmm. you.